animated Star Wars movie. <laughs> Mm. So this isn't part of the trilogies that span three generations. This is more of a spin-off film. It's a story that stands on its own, but also happens to be in the same universe. Hence the title, Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Okay, Chris, why the hell are you talking like that? Like what? Like I'm somehow in front of you, even though I'm clearly to your left. That's just the Chris Stuckman tradition. I always address the camera with my edited thoughts. It's kind of the Chris Stuckman way. Yeah, well, how about the Star Wars way and we have an opening crawl? I told you, Critic, it's not that kind of movie. Rogue One is the first of what is currently an unending series of Star Wars universe films. While the trilogies will continue to follow the stories of the characters we know and love from the first movie, these will be more background stories. Think of them as the Appendix and the Lord of the Rings, a way to get more history of fictional events and characters. They're standalone films that give us more information on a world we can't get enough of. So the idea of cutting out the crawl is just a way to show it's one of the many side stories that's what? yet to come. Oh, we okay. have another holiday theme, a Star Wars solstice. <laughs> it's just totally gonna ruin next year when we do a Star Wars feast day of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Look, this is just what Star Wars is now. It can't be any worse than the changes they made in the past. No, this is my show and I want to crawl. Let it roll! <laughs> <laughs> Episode 3.9. Hey, what's the hold up? I'm sorry, we're only making letters flow through space. If you yeah. can think of a better way to make letters flow through space, then I'd like to see it. Yeah. I guess we're stuck here for a bit. Hey, look, I'm a kitty cat. Yeah, no. While we're waiting That's for the crawl to get fixed, I guess we should go ahead and start the repeat. You got it. Stop that! This is Rogue One. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Sir, why'd we park so far away? <laughs> so a young brunette girl with a British accent is separated from her family and she spends most of her life with no direction trying to cope with that tragic day. Actually, that was Ray's character from Force Awakens. Oh, Didn't yeah, no, how'd I get those two mixed up? <clears throat> so a young brunette girl with a British accent is separated literally from the her family and she literally spends the most exact of her same life with no direction trying to cope with that tragic day. Not that Star Wars doesn't have a lot of repeat, but don't you think that's a little cut and paste? Oh, I'm sorry. I guess the young American guys didn't get enough attention. Okay, fair enough. After cheerfully accompanying the Rebel Alliance, Jin is taken to their headquarters where one of the Rebels named Cassian reveals that her father, Galen, is the architect of a new weapon called the Death Star. <laughs> the man who raised you named Saw. His name is Saw. Trust me, you'll forget all these names once the movie is over. Ah. A secret information from your father. We're hoping you could infiltrate him to figure out what it is. Well, I don't want to, but I guess I have no choice. Now, how long did it take to say all that? Less than a minute? I guess. So, why does it take us less than a minute and the movie a dozen minutes to say the same thing? This movie goes beyond taking its time. It stretches out so much info for a story that we already kind of have figured out. It's like watching it in slow-mo, yet they somehow talk in normal speech. Some of it doesn't even add up. Like when this pilot named Rook wants to defect for the rebellion, yet Saw doesn't trust him. So they hook him up to a lie detector squid. The squid can sense your feelings, your lies. What it voice lies. is that? Okay. How does he do that? I don't know. Where did you find him? I don't know. Why does he want to help you out? I don't know. What do you do if I'm lying or not lying? I don't know. What do you know? I really like tentacle head tie. <laughs> it also doesn't help that this movie jumps all over the place. It seems like every other minute it cuts to a new planet or solar system. I'm taking you to Rebel Headquarters. I'm taking you to find Saw. I'm taking you to the Death Star. I'm taking you out to lunch. <laughs> I completely forgot why we came here. <laughs> That's right, lunch. It's like they're trying to make a simple story seem bigger by constantly trying to seem angry and busy. Ah, the George Costanza method. Basically. Mm. Thankfully, their team is full of people who distract from that, like K2SO. Who's kind of like C3PO if they sucked out all the pussies. Greetings and salutations. I am C3PO. Piss off your pansy. Suck my big black rod. 
There's also a freedom fighter named Baze, whose philosophy is shoot first, ask questions, and whatever this world calls hell. Actually, I think it's just hell. So this universe has both angels and hell, yet no Christianity. Even the Midichlorian church. And then, of course, there's the blind warrior named... Um, yeah, I'm just calling him Tom. But the downside is, while many of them are entertaining, we don't really know that much about them. We have no idea how these two know each other. Why the pilot Rook defected. Yeah. Or why the hell Squidward was in this movie. Oh, Dude, you gotta let that yeah, go. you... no. what yeah, Chris. was that? Why was that in the movie? Stop putting scenes with tentacles in your movies. They don't work. It might be a good thing not knowing their stories, though, as when you do, it almost makes us less interested in them somehow. I'm kind of angry with you. I'm kind of angry with you. I thought you were my kind of father. I thought I kind of raised you. I thought we had a kind of connection. Kind of. Kind of. Kind of. Wow, we went over everything I feel like. No attachment. Yeah, I'm not going to miss you when you die. Speaking of which. <laughs> that blast, by the way, was a test by the Death Star done by General Krennic and Grand Moff Tarkin. Wait a minute, how'd they do that if Peter Cushing is dead? Oh no, not! That's right! Digital Talkin' Tarkin, available now for Hasbro for only $14.95. <laughs> yeah, the first game. That game's oh, too late. <laughs> it's like Jeff Bridges from Tron Legacy mixed with Jim Carrey from A Christmas Carol. Well, it's actually not that bad. Sometimes. The CG is very impressive. It always looks like somebody's really there. But the uncanny valley distracts from ever fully accepting it. Sometimes he looks convincing, but the rest of the time you'd swear they put the fake lips of John Lennon from Forrest Gump on there. Make it so they have nothing left on that planet. <laughs> no possessions? No religion? It's easy if you try, Dick. Dismiss. Ah, oh, good. At least the scene <laughs> is over. Oh, and don't forget, we have like five more meetings in the next 24 hours. Oh, uh, that's the other thing. He's in this film a lot. It kind of makes you wonder why they didn't just replace him with Darth Vader, who's only given less than 10 minutes in the movie. He's one of the most famous villains who always wears a mask. Why not use this guy as much as possible? Well, to be fair, it might be because Gene Earl Jones' voice is sounding a little tired after doing it all these years. Oh my god, are they still making these? Okay, where's the script? How many lines do I have? What? This it? Oh Christ, I was in the sand lot longer. What am I literally just taking a bath while I'm off screen? <laughs> okay, okay. <clears throat> Look here, General Krennic. Krennic? What the hell kind of name is that? It's like if one ear, not the other. Forgotten. I forgot he even said it. Oh, fuck it. Just don't have me scream no, and we'll be good. I don't care if he sounds old. He's Darth Vader. We deserve more of him. Remember when this guy directed Aaron Taylor Johnson, also starring Godzilla? Oh, that <laughs> Godzilla movie that had almost no Godzilla. Right. Yeah, yeah but... To be fair, that movie had such bland main characters. And, that uh, just and that also had Brian Cranston. Remember, the, yeah, the Godzilla right. movie also had well, Brian Cranston. Well Our main leads are mostly pretty flat. It's almost like they were given direction to not be awful, but not be interesting either. How do you know your father's not the enemy? I saw his message. He's on our side. He said so. Yes. I mean, <laughs> yes. In a totally impossible yet unexceptional way. I am passionate about this, but not too passionate, in case we're all to die at the end. Right. So the people don't get too depressed, we can still market this as a deep yet enjoyable adventure. Oh, did I mention we have toys? Okay! <laughs> I mean, uh, okay. <laughs> by the Empire, as once again, it doesn't seem as emotionally investing as it probably should be. Jim, I put a weakness in the Death Star so small that they'll never notice it. In fact, it's so small that every time they build a new one, it'll have the exact same weakness. Really? They never catch on? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Johnny Wrench is very bad, just yeah. Yeah. How do you the stars yeah. in the solar system. Okay, I'm dead now. <laughs> uh, no, Father, whatever. 
Upon finding out that the Rebels don't want to sneak in to get the plans for the Death Star, our team decides to go it alone and get it themselves. You on that ship. What's going on? Uh, everything's under control. Situation normal. What happened? Uh, had a slight weapons malfunction, but we're perfectly fine here. We're all fine here now. Thank you. How are you? What's your ship name? It better sound poetic and look good on a poster. Our name? Uh... Just think of something. Hurry! Uh... <laughs> Rogue. Rogue One. Rogue One? That sounds like a so-so comic series that was never given time to blue. Well, it makes more sense than just coming up with that out of the blue. More <laughs> conversation anyway. We're here! So Rogue One goes to the Empire's base to steal the plans. The Rebels eventually end up joining them, and... You know how Force Awakens was friggin' awesome, but the climax was mm. kind of meh? Rogue One was kind of meh, but the climax was friggin' awesome! If you want to know the truth, we haven't gotten a great space battle since Return of the Jedi. We did eventually get a good Star Wars film, but the space battles were still usually too busy with too much clutter yeah, going on. I guess. This follows one ship at a time again, making it feel like you're there. In fact, a lot of it really feels like you're in the action because of the exciting, even realistic way it's shot. But it doesn't just stop there. It moves it to the next level. You know how in Return of the Jedi they smash a Star Destroyer, yeah. which, by the way, never destroys any stars. Ironic, because they have a weapon that destroys planets. In fact, doesn't Death Star and Star Destroyer kind of mean, like, the same thing? <clears throat> anyway, you remember how it smashed into the Death Star in a giant blaze? Well, in this one, a ship pushes in just the right place, crashes into another Star Destroyer, which crashes into the shield blocking the planet, and just before another one shows up, crashing into a dozen other ships! It's amazing! This does still raise the question, though. If Vader is in this movie, why isn't he down there on that beach kicking ass? Um, hello? Sand? Oh, right. He hates sand. It's, of course, rough and irritating, and it gets everywhere. He has posters, like, all over the place. How did you miss this? <laughs> uh, I guess I'll have to go down there. Don't you have, like, a million stormtroopers? Yeah, but I can actually hit something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, Stormtroopers had to Vader comes back. My God, does he come back? Just when you think he contributed nothing to this movie, he comes aboard one of the ships and is like, I have come to deliver the most awesome scene in the movie. Yeah, no, this is nothing. This is literally nothing. I can do this with no hands. Watch. <laughs> Saber is also great at making people shorter. <laughs> and you, 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 you belong on the ceiling. Check it, check it. I'm not even looking at you. I'm not even looking at you. That's how easy this is. I'm so cool. Huh, look at this punk ass. Looks like Rebel Kool Aid. Oh, that's right, bitches. I'm stopping that with my head. With my goddamn head. But you know what they say. What goes in must come out. Out my ass. Okay, here we go, everybody. <laughs> what? I'm fucking amazing. Oh, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Shit's getting hot in here, huh? Oh, okay, yeah, we're gonna duke it out. We're gonna duke it out. You're a tough guy, huh? Oh, I'm so scared. Darth Vader's gonna die from your pussy fist. You're gonna save the galaxy people's head, right? Oh, wait, I forgot. I can choke a bitch. <laughs> Don't be your mic drop. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that was the greatest Darth Vader scene in all movie history. Despite all the film's flaws, it gave us two solid minutes of holy shitness. And speaking of flaws, there's still a few before we wrap up. Like how the emotional highlight is supposed to be the death of our two leads you're not really gonna lose sleep over. You won't miss us. But you didn't dislike us either. Our job is complete. And because the Tarkin wasn't freaky enough, we also get a CGI Princess Leia to top it all off. Oh, Christ, just tell me they do it better than Tarkin. Uh, sometimes it looks better, and sometimes it looks worse. It's kind of weird. How long is she on screen? About ten seconds. How can there be such a drastic change in only ten seconds? Well, it's not bad. 
Right, they were in and it. And that was Rogue One, the most above average Star Wars prequel. The film has famously gone through rewrites and reshoots, and it clearly shows. A lot of the time it feels all over the place, but some of the places they go to have some great atmosphere and action. The biggest problem is the characters aren't as memorable or fun as some of the other films, meaning it doesn't feel as large or epic. There's certainly problems with it, but it's hard to say there aren't a lot of cool scenes that overshadow them. It's not fun, per se, but it is cool. It's definitely more aggressive than like an actual war, and that oftentimes makes the world feel more real. It never quite goes too aggressive, but it doesn't really take any chances either. There's no surprises, and you get exactly what you'd expect, but what I expected wasn't that bad, so I enjoy myself fine. It's a perfectly okay <laughs> yeah. They need solo and Yeah. They need solo and that was pretty boring. Except for teasing a Kira and Darth Maul thing, which will probably never happen. So thank you, Sola. You teased us with one of the cool things that will probably never happen. Some were awful, some were just okay. So you see, Critic, Star Wars was a franchise before it was a franchise. Huh, I never thought of it like that. And, yeah, we'll always have the original movies. Ish. I guess that does count for something. You know, Critic, no matter what, Star Wars will always be special. <laughs> Darth Vader scene as cool as the one in this movie. Look, Darth Vader's one of the best villains of all time. They could do anything with him. Who knows what's on the horizon? That is Like what? Oh, okay, I felt like we were at a good spot there. It was a good spot to really, stop. Really? I wasn't feeling that. I wasn't okay, feeling that. Okay. Like, like what? Like what? Uh, they could CG a cartoon face on B. Arthur. Wow, that'd be amazing. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll stop there. Or, okay, uh, I really need an out. I need an out. Yeah, I can fly too, bitches. I'm amazing! I'm Chris Stuckman, and I can breathe in space for some reason. <laughs> Go Darth, go Darth Vader, go Darth Vader, go Darth Vader, yeah! Go Darth Vader, go Darth Vader, go Darth Vader, 